Howdy hackers and welcome to the next episode of Fairlight TV. This time we will deep dive into a specific protection. It's not the actual protection, but it's the boot file from the game Lost Tomb, which I'm working on now, which is the reason why I'm going to show you this. Um, so, uh, let's just switch screens for a second here and you can have a look at the text file I've written. So this is the plain disassembly of that boot file, Lost Tomb. Uh, so it loads to uh, address AC, so 00 AC, starting down in the zero page. And if you do a general disassembly of that file, it will look something like uh, what you see on the left here. It's the disassembly of address AC and onwards. Uh, yeah, and then it goes to uh, 0, 1, 2B. But this is not what's going to happen <laughs> when you load the game. Uh, and I will go through every line here and you will start to explore the art of understanding or reversing somebody else's code. So, uh, loading from AC is the address, the first address here, and it loads a set interrupt. And then it looks like it's loading uh, an LDX AB, uh, but it's actually not. So what happens here is that address AE and AF are the load pointer for the C64. So when you poke in address AE, uh, you would actually change the address that is uh, the destination for the next byte to be loaded. So, uh, going through this, uh, this uh, AD here, so the, the first byte, uh, A2, is ending up properly at AD. So that works fine. But then it pokes the address AB, so the, or the value AB on address AE, which actually means that the next byte it will load, it's going to load on 00AZ again. So AB was the last one, and then it increments it and then stores in that, uh, that address. So the AB you see here, which I'm highlighting here, the first one, changes the destination of the upcoming byte. So the address here, uh, so the, the, the data that comes next, which looks like AF here, is actually going to end up on 00AZ. I hope you follow that logic, because overloading the load pointer is a very, very fun trick you can play with. So here, it looks like it's storing some of the, uh, the instruction it loads uh, is that it should store something to 0, 1, AB, but it actually loads the 8, 8D here to address 0, 0, AD. And then here, AB is again loaded to address 0, 0, AE, which means, uh, which means that the, the 0, 1 that is loaded next is going to end up on 0, 0, AC again. And then it's playing that trick up until here, uh, where the address it's, uh, where the data it stores to address AE is the same value, AE. And then the trick is sort of gone, because as, as soon as you pass uh, the address uh, AE, that means you cannot kind of move back and store data previous. So, and then it stores O2 in what was previously 00. zero. So that means that uh, from this address onwards, it's storing the data on 0, 2, A, B. Because this is so, uh, the AE is stored to AE. The 0 to 2 is stored to AF, which means that now we have a new low byte and high byte uh, pointing at O2 AF, which I've written out here. And incrementing that by 1, that means that the next byte is going to be on 0 to B0. Was that confusing? Yeah, it is. That's the whole purpose of purpose of this loader. It's about supposed to confuse you as much as it possibly can. And it just got started. 
this is the first like 20 bytes that starts to confuse people okay so and uh and now it just loads it's loading the rest here what you see here to o2 b0 and i could scroll down here because this here which looks like it's o1 1a it's actually uh loading to o3 o2 so uh the address b uh, o2 bo in low byte high byte it's stored in address 0302 and that's one of the vectors that's used when you have loaded so it finished loading and then this one is used for for triggering the address uh, 02 ob which is what you see here as 00c8 okay what el what other tricks is it using first of all it's uh, setting the stack pointer to one okay uh, and then it stores something to something with an index. This actually sets the zero one address to basically 37. Uh, so this flips in all the rams. Uh, sorry, it flips in all the roms. And then it also sets the NMI vector. So if there is a, a, some sort of break on uh, or somebody touches the restore button, uh, nothing will happen because this points to an RTI. Then it closes the screen and then pushes 05 to the stack. And remember the stack was set to, uh, to 1. So it stores 05 in 0101 here. Okay, and then it loads uh, FO to accumulator and transfer that to both the X and Y register and then increases the X register. And then the X register is used here. So it's doing an exclusive OR with 0213 plus the F1 that we just incremented it to, which means that it's doing um, an exclusive OR with 02CB. So that is pointing to a table at 0304. And what you see here down, down here is that we're now talking this. Okay, so 0304 is this little table that it's using for doing an exclusive or uh, thing. And we were here, yes. And then it stores that at FF82. But 82... Uh, added and then if you add the f1 that means that it's going to wrap around memory and now it's going to poke on zero page address 73 using the trick of <laughs> memory being linear but then it restarts so if you have a pointer that points beyond the end of the memory it's going to go into zero page the, the normal trick is having a zero page pointer because if you have a zero, point point, zero page pointer that points to the end of a zero page with an index that would stretch into the stack, that actually also wraps in. So it starts from the beginning of zero page. I understand this is totally confusing. Please watch this five times and try to pause and, and look at the details and see if you understand. Feel free to ask me any additional questions in the comments down below and I will try to explain all of that in more detail if there is something you missed during my presentation here. Okay, so it's messing around with this, ex doing the exclusive OR. At the end of this there is something in the accumulator that it pushes to the stack. This is zero. The accumulator is zero here and the and the value zero is hence pushed to the stack. It's pushed to the stack at uh, 0100, so the very, very beginning of the stack. And this is the start address. It should be uh, 0500. Uh, so uh, let's go up here again. So the value five was pushed, pushed here. The value zero is pushed here. And that is the low byte high byte of the start address for the program it's about to load. I'll give that one away because that's what it's doing. Okay, and then it's doing uh, something from 02, comma x uh, and ending with uh, the value in, in address 0. 
So that is the bank, uh, the IO register uh, for, for bank selection. Um, and transfer that to X. And now it's doing, so uh, Y is F0 here. So when it's doing 01E8, comma uh, Y, it means 02D8. And let's see, 02D8. Um, yeah, I don't remember where that is. I should have noted that. O to C. Yeah, it's basically around here. Okay, it, it's probably checking itself here. But and then it stores to seven F O E, uh, and in real life that means that's seven F F E. Uh, and why is it doing that? It's 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 crapping the end of the memory just before cartridge, and then it's looping a number of bytes here. Uh, I presume this is to detect a cartridge. If there is a cartridge at 8000, which is the normal place where a cartridge is stored or, or found in memory, then this would work. Uh, it would detect that uh, storing something and then doing an exclusive OR, which basically means reading it. The store would store to memory. Uh, but the exclusive OR would read from the cartridge and then they wouldn't be the same and it would detect that and it would fail to load. Okay, um, and now it loads 72 and it pushes that. And the funny thing is that stack is also wrapping here. So this is storing the value 72 into uh, address 01FF. That is the content of the status, uh, the status register, uh, because what will happen in the end here is we'll do a return from interrupt, which is pushing the value from uh, from the stack that's pushed to the status register, and then it's pushing the return address, uh, and it's then jumping to that. Uh, we will get down to that uh, in a few uh, bytes further down transfer and then it's doing an RTS. Uh, the interesting thing here is that it's pushing another three bytes to the stack. Uh, so if you have fiddled with this jump, uh, which it looks like a handy place where you could play some sort of a, a, a little uh, a little uh, calling of your own routine. But if you do that, the next thing that will happen is that um, it will decrease the, the value 01FE, which is the, what the, the subroutine pushed to the stack for calling. And unless there was a 2, so decrease twice, uh, and then meaning it turns into 0, then that routine would, would fail as well. It's, it's just another detect if you have been there fiddling with it. And then it stores the value from uh, from this to address BB, or indirect to BB. The, the good thing here is that this is the, uh, or I'm not saying it's a good thing. So what BB is, it's the pointer to the file name. So it stores the file name it's going to use uh, in the subsequent load here. Um, the value here is zero, so the next, so the file name it's going to use is basically null, and there is a file which has a, a null file name, so that is the next thing it's going to load. Okay, so uh, yeah, and then it turns off kernel messages, it's actually going to do something which is productive rather than just detecting and, and fiddling with your code. And then it's calling uh, the standard kernel load, FFT5 is the standard kernel load. If carry is set uh, up on return from FFT5, that means that load has failed and the loading uh, should then abort. So you get to this address if everything worked. And if everything worked, it will start pushing the value 72 which is first going to the stack uh, for the system register, and then it will um, collect the uh, 0500 for the start address, and it will jump there. Okay, and this is also, uh, that was the jump vector that starts the program, so that's 02B0. 
And this, as we said before, is the little table it's using for the exclusive war here up here uh, for checking cartridges. And so that will uh, exclusive all oaring all of those would end up in a zero, I guess, because that is what we expect as a result from that. This is a very, very small piece of code. It's super compact and it's super complex. So this is what cracking C64 games is, and I presume it's the same on every platform. People doing obfuscated code in order to confuse you. And this one took uh, quite a few hours and, uh, and that was based on a number of years of experience doing nothing but this. Uh, yeah. But now you have it. If you're going to hack a game from Datasoft, you are likely going to find something like this in the very first file. And now you know how to read it, thanks to Fairlight. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.